All right, our next speaker is arguably one of the funniest guys you're going to hear tonight. Um, I absolutely adore Don Van Cleve. In addition to being the manager of Moon Taxi, which, by the way, has anyone seen Moon Taxi in this? How about that? And the work that Don has done getting those kids rocking and rolling. Um, they're going to be playing Coachella. They just came back from playing underneath Eric Church at the National Championship game in Arizona. Roll Tide. Um, Don is doing some great things with that band, but Don, that's only one aspect of Don's career. He was also the co-founder of Record Store Day and many other things. Welcome Don Van Cleve. Hi, everyone. Can't believe I've got to follow that funny guy that was just up. Um, I want to kind of take you through my history and really talk about why I'm so passionate every day about what I do. Um, this is me uh, in Huntington, Tennessee in 1964. Uh, this is taken around the same time that the Beatles were on Ed Sullivan. That really got me going. In the late 60s, um, I grew into a major pop fan. I had every single Beatles single, uh, but I was also into the Monkees and the Cow Sills, and obviously at that time, American Bandstand was a, was a, was a really big deal to, to kids. We only had three channels on the TV um, and no other options, uh, especially in a small town. Um, all my cousins were... Uh, older, and they were very disturbed by my uh, uh, choices in music other than the Beatles. In 1970, my dad, who was a 50-year uh, apparel business guy, he moved our family to Macon, Georgia. Um, and that, uh, you know, the first memory I had the day we moved there was around July 4th, and that's when the Atlanta Pop Festival was in Macon, Georgia. Um, my dad, I remember around the breakfast table, table the next morning, was like, there was some black cat out there, and he was playing a left-handed guitar, and he played the Star Spangled Banner. And I'm like, wow, I don't know what that's all about. My older cousins then proceeded to turn me on to Jimi Hendrix and The Doors and Woodstock and all the cool stuff. Um, that's me. Uh, I got really passionate about music in high school. Uh, Soul Train, American Bandstand. I was going to the record store and literally buying records on Street Date, um, uh, Pink Floyd, ZZ Top, Black Sabbath, you name it. Um, major impact on my life was Capricorn Records, which was based in Macon all during my high school. Uh, I was able to work with the, the wives of all the, the band roadies uh, at my dad's factory and, and really got me going. Um, the Allman Brothers Band was um, really floated my boat. They're the ones that made me understand that songs don't have to be three minutes and 30 seconds. Uh, my, my neighbor uh, knew the stock guy at Kmart, and he got us to eat a peach a week early. Uh, this picture was taken by me uh, at 14 years old. Um, this was the Allman Brothers doing their album release party for Eat a Peach the night before it came out. All the adults there couldn't understand why I knew all the words. Uh, I felt really cool, uh, but mainly just very passionate. Uh, this is me at Georgia Tech. Um, I did not study very much, uh, but I did take a whole lot of pictures, and I went to a whole lot of shows. After... After Georgia Tech, I went into the apparel business just like my dad. Uh, I worked at Hager Slacks in Dallas. I hated my life. Um, I was miserable, did not like it. CDs came out. I was going to Waterloo Records a lot. I decided to open a record store. It was called Magic Platter. Uh, it was down in Birmingham, Alabama. Um, we um, opened the store in 1988. Um, within a year or two, I was hanging out with big rock stars and could grow a good mullet. Um, really excited about that. We, uh, we hosted tons of in-stores by brand new bands. This is a picture of Dave Matthews um, on the uh, street date of his first major label record. We were one of his top five stores in the country. Uh, we broke a lot of bands really early. I can remember we sold a thousand copies of John Mayer's Room for Squares before it ever came out. 
Um, we stayed open 14 years. We won NARM Small Retailer of the Year twice in the late 90s. Um, in 1995, I got a call from a friend at Album Network, Mark Cope, who said, get your ass to San Francisco tomorrow. Well, we've got all these retailers there, uh, and we need you there. So I went there, and we had a meeting, and we formed the Coalition of Independent Music Stores. Um, Sims, I proudly say, uh, I ran that company for 15 years. Um, I, I, you know, we just celebrated the, the 20th anniversary. I actually ran it for about 14 years. Uh, and we, we took on the man. I mean, that's what we did. That's what we wanted to do. We were so angry that um, anytime we were breaking bands, all the chain stores like Turtles and Tower and all those guys were getting all the marketing money. So we aimed to change that. Our first project that we took on collectively was Ben Harper for Fight Your Mind. Um, and we sold more in the first month than he had sold in the history of the last record. So we were off and running. Uh, we would take on people like U2 or, or the Eagles, um, RIP uh, Glenn Fry. Uh, we, we were very angry when uh, big, big uh, companies would get exclusive records. And we really took on the Eagles when they decided to sell a record exclusively at Walmart. Um, yeah, so Irving Azoff called us idiots and terrorists. Um, so we had these... We had these buttons made that we wore to NARM the next year on one of Irving's idiots. Um, however, we decided, you know what, if you can't beat them, join them. So we decided to start doing our own exclusives. So we started a company called Junket Boy, which was my nickname. Uh, but we, it's now morphed into Think Indie, which has now released over 2,000 exclusive records for independent retail. Um, we start. Sorry, we started out with Weezer um, and ended up, you know, selling major league artist um, uh, projects exclusively into um, uh, indie retail. But the big thing was our passion for vinyl and needing to bring vinyl back. So I started importing tons of vinyl uh, from the UK, uh, and and it really, you know, got things going. And 2008 was a giant year for me. My daughter handed me a CD. Uh, that had a sticky note on it that said, pay attention. That was the band Moon Taxi. Uh, these are those guys back then. Uh, they're now, you know, kicking butt. We're selling out everywhere. We're putting on a big show tomorrow, putting up a big show tomorrow that you'll hear about. Uh, but we, we, we also, that year, uh, as a result of all of our efforts, we co-founded Record Store Day. I did that with five other people. Uh, we had 10 releases the first year. You got to understand iTunes and iPods were like going through the roof at this time. And we had a real passion for vinyl and we wanted to bring it back and research said you can't do that. So we hired a publicist. We got Metallica involved. The stores whined that they didn't want to do it, but they did and they ended up having the biggest day ever. Um, truth is, it's now more important than Christmas to independent record stores and it's now a worldwide phenomenon. And I'm very, very proud of that. Thanks. That year also, after 20 years in independent retail, I decided I really needed to do something else. Um, and, and, you know, at 50, I decided to change careers like any smart person does. Um, so I joined the artist organization, which was a management company in LA, managed John Legend, Counting Crows, Modest Yahoo. Five days into my new job there, we signed this guy, and uh, I took that picture, and, um, and they said, you know, he's, he, you're now responsible. And I was like, oh, shit. Um, I don't really know what I'm doing. First thing I had to do was go to Paris and conduct a big press conference for him. Uh, and he was going to go on tour, and uh, at 11 o'clock at night, he said, I don't want to do those 20 interviews tomorrow at that place, find another place, and I had to go and make that happen. That's part of management, and that's, you know... It's hard to learn, but once you get it, you get it. Uh, the next thing I did uh, with, with my partners at Dow is reform Soundgarden. Uh, this picture's never been seen, but this is the day that they decided to reform at the Pearl Jam offices. 
Um, five managers had tried to get it done. No one was able to. Uh, I put out a bunch of catalog records with these guys and a new record and really had a great time. After traveling to the West Coast literally 30 times a year, I finally said, I got to do something in Nashville and I got to have a good time here. Uh, so I left the, these guys and, and decided to look around here. I still had Moon Taxi to manage. So I ended up joining the Made In Network. We are a YouTube network that has 70 million views a month. Uh, and it's right down the street here. My boss is 25 years old. Uh, and I love it. I'm very passionate about it. And these guys and these guys at Moon Taxi are something I get up and love doing every single day. So my, my closing statement for you know, all the kids in here from Belmont or, or, or whoever is, be passionate. If you hate your job, jump to another thing. Do not be scared. Follow your uh, innermost thoughts and go. Do not hesitate and waste a minute. This is not a dress rehearsal. Thank you. Awesome.